Our next guest, who walked away from the biggest show in television last year because he wanted to be his own boss. Simon Cowell has a talent for finding talent. But does he have that certain special something that draws people to you and makes you a star? Or as he calls it, the X Factor. For almost 10 years, Simon Cowell has been judging America. That was appalling with a capital A. And finding it full of untalented people. You are a terrible singer, you are a terrible dancer, you have no charisma. It's really that bad. Worse than you think. Can I do it one more time? Listen, Cindy, listen to me. There's only so much punishment a human being can take. All right. This year, Simon Cowell shocked his fans. I'm going to have a break. He walked away from the most popular show on television, American Idol, so that he could do his own show, The X Factor. It's The X Factor, judges! Which is actually very similar. This, to me, didn't shine. With one key difference. Simon is not just a judge on The X Factor, he owns and controls it. So this, I think, is your share? I met him at his beautiful mansion in Los Angeles. We talked on the patio. He sat rather devilishly, next to an actual ring of fire, a fountain with a gas flame. I started with my favorite question. What's the biggest misconception about you? Um, that I don't like people. And you do like people? I love people. Why do I say I love people? I like people. I can normally tell by looking in people's eyes whether they're a nice person or not. So when I'm mean, it's because I normally see something. No, Simon, you're often mean. That's why people love you or hate you, because you're mean. But I, I kind of say what I'm thinking at the time, and I think other people think the same thing. Before X Factor was even on the air, Simon predicted that it would be an instant hit with 20 million viewers. It is not getting 20 million viewers. Not yet, Barbara. Mm. So is I it will a get but? there eventually. Ah, and what if you don't? I'll be unhappy. I like winning. If I play Monopoly with you and you win, I'm not happy. So I heard that when you were a little kid and you weren't buying Park Place, you would throw over the whole game. You did that. I still do. Simon, born in 1959, grew up with his younger brother in a wealthy family. His father worked for EMI, the giant music company. A mischievous child, Simon dropped out of high school and by 20, had started his own small music label. His big hit was Roof Mix, which was dogs barking to dance music. He dressed up as a dog, yes, that's him, to promote the song in his first ever television appearance. Who's your dislikes and your influences in the music trade? Influences are probably the Corgis, Bow Wow Wow, <laughs> the Canine League, the Beagles, and dislikes Cat Stevens. He's barking at the wrong tree. <laughs> he went on to develop a series of British pop acts very successfully. Very good. Um, then in 2001, he was hired to be a judge on a new British show, Pop Idol, created by Simon Fuller. That led to American Idol, which inspired Simon to create his own British show, The X Factor, which led to his new show, which led to Simon Fuller suing him. He feels that you copied his show. He feels that, I feel I didn't. The idea that you can control something and no one else is allowed to do something similar is ridiculous. Although many think of him only as the mean judge, he's actually a mogul. He has developed, owns, and manages two hugely profitable TV franchises. Got Talent is in over 40 countries. And The X Factor is a huge hit in over 30 countries, including Kazakhstan, India, Denmark, Bulgaria, Croatia, and the Ukraine. All told, Simon is reportedly worth over $320 million and counting. But he's never been married. In fact, his most successful relationship with a woman may be his professional one with Paula Abdul. 
said no. She was his fellow judge on American Idol, and he's hired her to be a judge on The X Factor. Has your relationship changed? Well, we didn't like each other at the beginning. Why did you dislike her? It was, I think it was sexual tension. Really? On her part. That she really wanted you? Paula Abdul wanted a you? A million percent. And what happened? You didn't want her? I, I considered it, but then <laughs> I thought, <laughs> I, don't you think are the, impossible. I don't think the after would be as good as the before. <laughs> you do not want to wake up in the morning with Paula Abdul. I'd let her stay for a few hours, but then it would have to be good night. Have you said this to her? Yeah. Oh. And what does she say? Maybe not quite. I, I bet not quite. No, and if you're watching, Paula, it is true. <laughs> <laughs> the truth is, Simon would be hard to live with. He stays up all night, tending to his businesses around the world. Tell me about your morning regimen. I wake up, and then they come in with the first round of breakfast. Which is? The first round is hot water with lemon, followed by fresh orange juice, followed by fresh papaya juice, tons of vitamins poured in them. Um, then round two, I'm now having toast at the moment. Then I have a spinach smoothie, which is made of spinach, bananas, and lemon. Um, and then I have a blueberry smoothie, because I heard it's good for you. I'm, I, I'm speechless. What are, what are you having all this stuff for? I think it really, it really does, it, it makes you feel good. Keeps you young? I think it does, yeah. Yeah. What time is breakfast? Twelve. <laughs> you eat all of this health stuff and you smoke. Yeah, it's called balance. <laughs> it's called crazy. <laughs> it is a bit crazy. What's your biggest fear? Failure, always. And being unhappy. Yeah. I'd hate the idea. Actually, you know what else? Being bored. I really, really get bored. Um, and I don't like small talk. And I'm claustrophobic. This is why I'm sitting out indoor, outdoor now. I like to be kind of outdoors the whole time. Would you ever go to a therapist? <laughs> I mean, with all due respect... Do I need it? Uh, <laughs> you probably need it, yes. <laughs>